Dimp Digital presents Idle Game Chat. Hello, Apps here from Dimp Digital. Welcome to Idle Game Chat. This is the weekly video games podcast where we give our impressions of the games that you can play today and react to the latest news from the wonderful world of video games. We are here every Monday on your favourite podcast app and YouTube absolutely free. This week, I'm joined by the former Dimp Digital Gaming Quiz champion. It's Pac-Man himself. It's Tom Adcock. How's it going? It's going well, mate. I'm back. Good. I've had, I've had sort of segments of the fan base reaching out to me personally, just saying, oh, yeah, there's been a falling out. Like, why, why, why haven't you been on there? Mm. Well, it's been technical issues, isn't it? There's been, this, this should be the last gremlin episode we have with you because you're getting super fast internet soon. Yep, test case. Like, sort of a bit, a bit like the coronavirus, that old man, or old woman, with yep. like, the sort of test case for wakering internet, yeah, coming yep. into the. Uh, Modern times. So. Getting, getting a huge fibre upgrade. I don't think it's around here yet because we're at the other end, so I think we've been stitched up. Um, and whoever here before has done something with the internet cabling and fucked it up, so I need to get a specialist around. Any recommendations, let me know. Got to work in the Essex area. Anyway. I don't think that exists, mate. Just really quick on that. Um, Sarah's parents once had got someone around. Yeah. And pa- so he'd like, obviously charged whatever it is, 75 quid call out. His cool. recommendations at the end of it was to put the router like in the front room in the middle because that will get a better reception and add some tin foil to the back of it. No. I mean, that's uh, not right. Like, no, it's mental. I paid him, though. Uh, right. So was- if you're going to recommend people, don't be not those sort of people. Eh? That's not good enough. <laughs> I could have done that myself. This is big boy shit anyway. They'll need to, I'll get. I'll make sure I screen them when I call them and say, "Look, here's the problem. You've got to know your shit for this." It's annoying because the geezer who used to live next door used to do all that and moved out a year and a half ago. You need to be getting those like relationships cemented well, early, mate. His son lives down this road somewhere, like four doors up. So I might. I don't know exactly what house. I can't really go knocking saying, "Right, are you are you Alan's son?" And they'd be like. Nope. Just like walk that. up and down the road going, oh, internet bad again, isn't it? <laughs> Kaz, Kaz. Well, he, uh, he claimed he was retired anyway, but you know what the old boys are like. They always say they're retired and they do more work than they ever have, so uh, there's, there's a chance to get him. Um, anyway, excited for this one because Adcock has played through Demon Souls and you're probably the most accomplished from software player we have. So I am interested to get your perspective and we'll probably have some other chat along the way uh, towards the back end of the podcast but before we get into all that i have to let you know that you can support us financially by going to patreon.com forward slash idle game chat hands go in pockets money can come out and go to us if you can't afford it or you don't want to don't matter either just happy to have you on board i guess listening from all corners of the world um agcock from software guru You've managed to battle your way through Demon Souls, one of the very few PS5 only launch games. A lot of the stuff was on PS4 as well. Uh, this is a first party jobby. It's a remake of the 20, oh no, 2009 game. So 11 years old, give or take. Firstly, to get the perspective, had you ever touched or dabbled with the original Demon Souls? No, sir. Um, I remember like one friend. It was. I think it was a difficult even to purchase it. I feel like it was kind of like I feel like you had to import it or something originally, and then it kind of did get a bit of a following here and uh, whatnot. So I always remember one friend, like hardcore person, telling me about it, saying, "This is this game. You need to be playing it." I missed yeah. it. I then missed the whole series basically up until way later. Uh, so no, never played it. To be honest, not it's interesting like i imagined it to be like a lot less like the soulsborne series than it kind of turned out to be right so i wasn't really even that interested in playing it i thought it was more just like the blueprints for what came later yes yes interesting um my understanding is that this is a remake in the same sort of vein that blue point did for shadow of the colossus in that they didn't 
meddle with the gameplay or the structure of the game, so that's all kept in tack. It's primarily a visual upgrade and remake and a performance update as well, given that you've got 60 FPS that's an option in performance mode. And this, like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the, the few PlayStation 5 only games you can't get it anywhere else and that leads us to sort of speculate that it was built specifically for this platform so from that perspective does it feel next gen like did you did you plonk this on and go cool gen 9 is here or was it more like ah that looks good runs well but what else you got i wouldn't have noticed um no yeah i think it yeah is the short answer like i've got a brand new telly and it's fucking massive and Mm. brand new console with a brand new game that as you say is only available on that console it looks the tits is is the truth i mean these games aren't they're more like about the atmosphere than actual like you know hard grunt you know photo realistic graphics that's what they go for a lot of them don't look or run that great historically there's always been a bit of an achilles heel um, mm-hmm. that i assume is not the case here no and as like most other games you know considering i guess this one's going to be pushing the console a little bit harder the load times were fantastic still mm. Every, yeah like performance wise perfect i think i did have one hard crash i think it's just one like yeah. full shutdown jobby but didn't lose any like progress or anything so no bother so no all good and um, you did you even try like the cinematic mode, or was you just from day day dot put performance mode on? Did you switch between the two and then decide right? I need these frames rather than this this extra bit exactly. resolution. Yeah, no, I switched. Like, so sorry, I, I tested both out. Like, I mean, first thing I did, and then to be honest, oh, I'm not. My old eyes are, are struggling really to even see the difference. If I'm honest, so yeah, yeah I went straight with. 1080 performance 60 so that yeah it's a no-brainer isn't it really like i'm i'm much the same that if you i'm sure if you put them side by side and zoomed in and went here's the different texture i go oh yeah i can see that but whilst you're playing the game it, it looks good enough in performance mode and you've got the double of the frame rate so exactly for a game like this where you kind of need everything to be going your way sometimes those uh those extra frames could end up being crucial um, yep. during your adventure you touched on the load times because one of the frustrations i had with with bloodborne uh, was the load times because not only did blood staff beast just kill me for the 18th time in a row i'm then presented with this loading screen for it felt like minutes on end um how are we doing with demon souls you mentioned they were better i imagine it's not instant but, but much more manageable than what you'd previously oh, mate, experienced it's lightning the only thing is i've not played this game because it's a bit of a weird one in that obviously I'd rather shorter loading times, as you say, in like the other games is you get killed and you're sitting there staring at like swords and bits of lore coming up for the next like two minutes. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. But this is lightning fast. Like you're back in and, you know, running around within set, I'd say under, under 10 seconds. Like yeah. it's, it's quick, but then you do like in a game like this, where a lot of the story is told, through the objects you can find and things. Yes. I, I, the one thing I'll say is I don't know if Demon Souls did this, so I've got nothing to go back on at the moment, but I'd assume it did. And yeah, there are no, no, there's no like character loading screens at all. There's no like law. It's literally you died a bit of smog and you're back running around all in, like I said, probably 10 seconds tops. Yeah. And you, I'll take it. You prefer that trade off over the course of a game like this. I do in a way I wouldn't mind, you know, an option just to, fade out of it perhaps would be the yeah so it presents you a screen you can press x and then go yeah. go to it and exactly you can, you can read what's but, coming up but given the hard choice yeah there's again because obviously it is frustrating but it does sort of slightly lessen the sting knowing that you can just be back on and playing you know when i think of other games like but they're usually like the 2d ones i play like um cuphead and um mm. celeste and things that's one of those ga- you know you die and you're instantly back in the game playing again so it does give you that all right one more shot and i found myself doing that over and over just thinking right i'm doing one more run here then i'll go to bed yeah. obviously it turned into about 12 more runs wow. but yeah we can get more runs in now because you're not sitting there staring at load screens which, exactly. is, which is handy and just so people at home get a perspective on your I guess the the gameplay experience that you've had for the previous Souls. Am I, am I right in saying you've you've done? Is it all three Dark Souls or just one and three? 
So one and three Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and now this. So I'm and missing this. Dark Souls two and um, Sekiro, or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. And does because just looking at this, it feels like Demon Souls is more akin to Dark Souls in terms of the setting for one. Like you can just look at it and say that's not Bloodborne, um, and also. Perhaps the combat, in t- in, in, and what I mean by that is that you've got a, a hefty shield, or you can choose to have a hefty shield. And it's an option to kind of block. Whereas Bloodborne was a was a dodge game. You know, it's keep out of the way. If you get hit, try and get it back from from being aggressive. Is it is that a correct assessment, or have I mis mis muddled? No, together? spot on. Like I said, it, it surprised me paid how for much. It, get that spot on. Yeah. <laughs> it was surprised me how much it was. Dark Souls that I was expecting, you know, like hints here and there, and you know, maybe aesthetically mm. it looked the same, but it's all there really. Apart, the only thing I would say that takes it away from being like full just Dark Souls zero point five or whatever is the fact that it's not um, like one interconnected world. It's um, mm. you know the hub, and then you'll go to like different areas of the the city or the country or whatever it is, yeah, and you'll do like levels one two three and then you can just go to another part and do one to three but you're always coming back to that base and then setting out from there you're not going deeper and deeper into the world as you do in the other games basically no. and what's this base allow you to do is this where you level up is there npcs there is can you buy gear there what's that is it is it kind of like the hunter's i'm referring to bloodborne because that's the one i'm familiar with but is it kind of like the hunter's dream when you die you'd go back there and do some admin basically to try and get stronger. It is exactly the same as the Hunter's Dream. So you've even got like, you know, the two like ascending staircases that meet in the middle at the top. <laughs> yeah. With, with like, I think they were like um, fountains or something in Bloodborne. Here you've got like old statues that you would just like access the levels. I don't think there was NPCs in the Hunter's Dream though, was there? Or was there was that, that old remember? fucker in the wheelchair and that doll from what I remember. Yeah, so that's it. But- you could kill the doll. Yeah, you, well, I read this afterwards. You can do that on on this as well. So in here, it's more like um, Dark Souls, where you've got all of that what you just said in Bloodborne, plus any NPCs you meet in the game will generally come back to right. the Nexus, and they'll then be there to um, upgrade gear, give you spells, um, look after your um, items, that sort of thing. So yeah, excellent. But I did read the yeah one wrong swing of your sword if you accidentally press X instead of or R one instead of X or whatever. Mm. You take a swipe at one of them, then that's them sort of uh, out of the game, angered and on your case for the rest of the game. They ain't helping you. Yeah, and I, 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 the trouble with the Souls games is it seems like it saves immediately after you've done anything. So mm-hmm. if, if you did do it by accident, <laughs> you can't just. I mean, if, I mean, if you just pulled the plug out quickly, you'd, you'd get away with it. But generally, it seems to save almost immediately when something happens, any event. So you get yourself right stitched up. Um, what sort of did you spend much time in the character creation? Because it looked like they had expanded that. And and previous Souls games, let's be honest, have been awful for that. I mean, a lot of people don't care about it. But I had a little dabble and run through a few of the uh, the player creations that people had done on Demon Souls. And it seems like they've expanded that and gives you loads of options if you want to fanny about in there. Nah, for two minutes, mate. It started off with a little black fella. I just took his hair off, made him nice and pasty and white, and job done. That's it. Easy as that. And did that you... Easy. Do you choose a class at that point, or you- yes, I cheat. That instantly went to sort of cheat mode. I googled what's the best starting class for someone. Mate, cause you, I know you say that I'm the the person with the most experience. Whatever these games, I'm not good at. Them. I need all the help I can get. So uh, yeah, literally said which is the easiest as a starting class. It gave me two, and uh, I picked the. I think it was the royal class. It's, it had magic, which I got on with quite well on. Um, I think Dark Souls 3, so I thought I'll go down that avenue again. I know what I'm doing with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Did it seem like the correct decision, or was it, or should you get halfway through it and think, I'm not quite sure about this royal class? I feel a bit. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I definitely struggled more. Like, uh, um, there's a couple of reasons I'll go into, but yeah, I, I, it didn't start out well for me. Like, I wasn't really too sure. I don't, again, don't know if it's. I was just out of touch with these games. So, I, I for some reason, kept. Like you, when you beat a boss, you've got choices. You can either consume the souls for like, you know, a big amount of souls. You can then just buy, you know, upgrades and whatever. Yeah. You can trade it with um, a uh, smith for like upgrades to your weapons, or you can trade it for a magician for upgrades to your magic. Cool. For some reason, the first couple of bosses, I just traded them for like 
the souls, like the bog standard currency, which you can get from killing anything. Yeah, right. and, and so sort of, I think I put myself in a bit of a disadvantage. And then once I kind of figured things out properly, from that point on, it became much, like I was much more like on board with the class I picked and things. And once I started to actually lean into it, like it does really help, basically. Yeah. Can you, if you wasn't getting on with that class, does it give you any flexibility to kind of pivot and change enough weaponry that you can perform differently and perhaps start investing in other stats? Or are you so it's a good locked question. in? You, there's definitely two other builds you can do. Now, I don't know if they're just cosmetic builds, because like I said, I just done the bog standard white guy, no effort. Yeah. But I'm not sure if they are actually another character that you can do all together. So there might be a lot of flex and probably someone will be able to tell us for sure but definitely cosmetically potentially a full character and then if you just want to start investing in other skills i mean there's so, there is so much flex with that you like in the game anyway in that mm. there are so many weapons so many like you know not, not so many but a lot of people to interact with that can do different things so yeah if you want to like avoid your magic even if you're that's your build you can you know get some armor somewhere during the game you can buy a massive shield you can upgrade your strength so you can carry it all and, and all of a sudden you can just be a tank well yeah it, you know you've got to put a work in but yeah absolutely that's possible i will talk about the structure because i think that's where one of the biggest departures not departures because it's the original but one of the differences between this and perhaps some of the other souls game you kind of mentioned about the interconnected worlds but was there anything else in the in the gameplay kind of realm where you thought this doesn't feel like a souls game i've played before was it very much familiar once you once you got your eye in and started to you know figure out how it all all works no it was pretty much all familiar i think the only it was that structure was a and then as far as i I could tell there weren't any optional bosses i think i when i looked afterwards Mm. i thought every single boss list or bar one i couldn't even find so really whereas the souls ones probably have what an extra like four or five minimum yeah, of, like, optional yeah. bosses quite a few um so yeah as far as i could tell there was none or maybe one um and then yeah, yeah much more linear um i don't know if linear is the right word but more gamey um structure to it basically yeah so if you can explain expand on like the the structure of how it works because my experiences with bloodborne you've set off and like you mentioned, it's a good way of putting it. You kind of just end up going deeper and deeper into this big, giant, interconnected map where you unlock shortcuts and whatnot. And then along the way, one of the big things is you get lamps or, or bonfires to sort of checkpoint your progress, and you can use those to fast travel to and from and to get around quicker and also just to save you having to run through the same areas over and over again, which you, you, you do have to do anyway, but it kind of reduces it. What are we looking at here in terms of of demon souls it sounds like it's a bit different and they hadn't quite come up with the idea or had the architectural knowledge to do an interconnected world yeah i, I think like in hindsight now looking back it seems like the dark souls formula is was the natural progression from what they've got here yeah but this probably works but it's a really nice jumping on point i would say because so in this you start in i guess world one one yeah you beat that and you can go to world one two sounds like mario that point, yeah and then at that point, the rest of the map opens up. Oh. So if you're if you want to go to world two one, you can. If you want to go to world three one four one or five one, you can. And then if you unlock one of those, then you can go to if you unlock five one, you can go to five two. Right. So basically, if you kind of dead end somewhere or you, you, you're banging your head against the brick wall on three one, you can go to any of those other worlds and have a crack at you know either the first part or the second stage or the third stage if you're there. And then once you kind of, yeah, so it, I think that's a really, there's a number of times early on where I was really struggling with a level. I was like, you know what, clearly I'm underpowered. I'm just going to leave that, going to go somewhere else, get some items, you know, see what's going on. And so it, there's always that, it kind of takes away the frustration a bit. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, so you, well, I do kind of bang my head against the brick wall in these games. I'm like, I'm shit at them, but I'm persistent. <laughs> And it took me a while to, you know, unlearn that lesson and just be like, look, I've died four times. Like, that's enough. Like, go and see what else is going on somewhere else. You're, you're bound to find something that's going to make this easier. And it almost always did. Interesting. So one of the things that was difficult I found with Bloodborne was navigating and knowing where to go 
because of the interconnectivity of the world and sometimes it was just a tiny little alleyway that I'd missed 50 times around on my patrol um, not realising I had to do that or it'd be like you mentioned the optional bosses I'd go down end up at a dead end kill a boss and think oh now I don't know where to go because I thought this was the, the way to progress. Are there any? Do you, did you run into any of those sort of situations, or because of the simplified nature of World One One Two One, all that good stuff, is there kind of less chance of that happening and getting lost oh, yeah. and, and getting tangled up and not knowing where to go? Yeah, no. There's a couple of like just odd, like you know, level designs where you know you might not see a tiny alley that's to your right at the end of the stage. Yeah. But generally speaking, yeah, yeah, that's gone as well. It's way more linear. It's just A to B. On some of the bigger stages, you might unlock a shortcut, which you know I guess could potentially confuse you a bit, but not really. Most of the games are kind of just one and done, or the shortcut is so obscure that I just didn't find them anyway, and. Yeah, so it's just A to B, you know, that's it. So, yeah, that again, for like someone coming in fresh, that's probably another really good selling point. Yeah, and do the stages have any form of bonfires or lamps or checkpoint, or is it you have to do stage one, one in one go, kill the boss, or you're back to square one every time? So, like I said, there's shortcuts, yep. but not so you might undo a gate or, you know, pull a lever and that gets a lift going. Yeah. But. It's by no means guaranteed. So often the thing is, it's like learning the rhythm of these games, isn't it? Because really you only need to go around the stage once to collect all your loot and get the biggest number of souls. You can then generally, there is, there is normally a shortcut, like a shorter route to the boss basically. And you can basically run past everyone at that point anyway. Once you're kind of leveled up and you've got everything you need, it then becomes just a, a proper video game. You just learn everyone's tactics who you need to fight who you need to avoid yeah and the quickest safest way to the boss and yeah like i said sometimes there will be a legit shortcut that takes you straight to the boss interesting yeah. and and you have to i take it you have to kill the boss on each stage to, to unlock the next tier within that world exactly yeah you do yeah so the end of each stage is a boss funnily enough this is the what i'd say about the game is it, it's kind of like front heavy in the it took me a while to notice actually like actually two of them but basically the third so there's three areas on all five stages yeah and there's four areas on stage one which becomes like the last stage that doesn't unlock until you do all the others but basically stage three on all of those is just a boss fight so you do like level one stage and boss level two stage and boss level three just the boss so as you start like picking down the levels all of a sudden it's like oh wow how, like they're all just going to be bosses i'm really closing in on the end here and i kind of didn't realize that at first because of the like non-linear way i went around the levels it was you know so yeah and do they get progressively harder does is is one one easier than what one three is or one two or is it a bit of a mix up it depends on your play style and yeah and i think this is a classic sort of feature of these games i've learned they'll just throw in spikes <laughs> right, you know, yeah. seemingly at random just to fuck with you you know so no, it's just, I mean, generally speaking, I guess, yes, but, you know, there's two or three in there that are just quite early, one of them particularly, that would just leave you scratching your head. You'd be like, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah. And then, I think, I remember always remember you saying this about uh, Bloodborne. I think you played that way before I played any of these. Like, that's where you kind of go online, though, and, like, you know, there is a really good community about these games, and, yeah, you know, people will tell you that you can be done, you know, just keep grinding it out, that here's a tactic that might work for you. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah and do you lose your souls when you die or are they retained and that when you go back into the hub world that's where you can upgrade make that bastard mechanics there you'll love this the last boss has got a move where he'll like if he gets you in it he just takes away you just level down one level my god and if he gets you again you level down again and again and you can't ever get it back well you can but you've got to go out and grind it out again shitty now yeah oh and also this is a good one this is the one thing actually that isn't like souls Glad I remember this. So basically, and I didn't realise, and this is why I struggled early. Like the worlds now, I'm not going to say this word right. It's like tenancy or something, tenancy. Right. So like it's like, like it's really hard to explain. So basically, hang on, let me just have a look. Demon Souls, because I don't world live research. Yeah, just talk about yourselves. It's called like tendency. And right. basically, if you do certain things in a level, like so basically, I guess, I think this is different to Bloodborne, you're generally dead, but like you're in soul form, so you have less energy and your character will kind of flash. Um, 
most of the game because you die so often. Yeah. If you beat a bo- if you do certain things, if you beat a boss, if you go online and help somebody else beat a boss, or there's like certain objects you can consume, they'll give you back like your full humanity, so your health bar would double. Um, mm. You can then invade people's games and do a bunch of other stuff. Now, if you die like so many times, say you keep becoming a, like full human and dying in a level, yeah, it will like aggravate the level and the game becomes significantly harder. Like these red demon enemies will spawn. Yeah, so like, basically, that, but it's not like Mario where if you're dying so many times, it gives you a free feather to fly through. They make the double down on it. They make the game even harder. What so are I didn't you doing? realize. This. I know. So I didn't realize this. And like, if you kill an NPC, it might do the same things. Oh. And basically, it starts white's good. It has several other levels and it goes jet black. So if you make a level jet black, you're in for a real shitter, which is what I managed to do. <laughs> and the only way to stop that happening is to beat the, the level boss, which basically you can't get to because there's all these like red demons after you that won't leave you alone or hack you to death in like two. Well, most of them just one hit you. Yeah. So you literally got to just like be really patient and fight each one individually and clear them off. Once you beat them once, they won't come back. Yes. But, um, yeah, that's something they took out of Dark Souls, which... Like once you know, once I read about it and learned it was a thing, then it was quite easy to avoid. But yeah. you can really walk into that one. That's interesting. So would you find yourself like if you wanted to grind for experience and you had a hard boss? I assume there were times when you wouldn't go and confront the boss because if you lost to him, you would have to sort of come back and and beat him next time to get those souls back. Would you then just return to the hub, level up, and then go again? Yeah, a couple of times that happened. If you have a really good run, so you kind of, you know, at the end of a level with like 60,000 souls, yeah, um, then, yeah, you, you're, you're safer just to kind of run back. So you've basically cleared the level, get yourself back to that nexus, upgrade, like level up. Do you physically run back, back or can you just choose to sort of talk port, No, port so, back? I, again, don't know how this works in other games, but basically you've got an object where you can return back to the nexus or sort the of start of the level, but you you forfeit all your souls, so you have to run back. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose if you cleared it down, like you said, and you don't fall off a bridge, then... Yeah, you're, exactly. You're and okay. To be honest, what happens is, again, on these games, like, what's something that is really consistent is you'll usually find, like, little, like, really nice farming spots. You know, there'll be a run of, like... Yeah. Eight enemies right at the beginning that are all high-powered, but you, once you kind of learn how to beat them, you can just rinse and repeat that and just... Live. So almost, like... I would like loot a, like a stage for all its actual loot, but not really worry too much about the souls themselves. Like I wouldn't beat myself up if I lost them like deep in. Yeah. I mean, really deep in it's a problem, but most of the time it was all right. And then I would just like a couple of times I just spent an hour, hour and a half like chatting to Sarah or whatever, but I was just, you know, literally just looping around this one area, leveling up. Interesting. And you can get your souls back if you get killed by the enemy and go and kill them. That's it. That's still there. Yeah, that's still there. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's actually. I mean, off, on the surface, when people look at it, if they've played Dark Souls and not Demon Souls and even Bloodborne, they might look at Demon Souls and say oh, that'll operate the same as Dark Souls. But there's actually quite a few fundamental differences. Um, yeah, it still retains few. that DNA, but they've clearly either expanded the structure or you know made it more complicated, depending on your perspective. Um, and, and what? Because that's. You, like you, I think the word prototype comes to mind when people see Demon Souls. It was sort of like a blueprint of what they could do. Didn't quite get to the stage where they got it into a Dark Souls form, but in many people's minds, they might hear this and think, oh, that sounds like it's going backwards. But did it feel like that playing Demon Souls in 2020? No, it felt, it felt you know different enough that it was like fun and a couple of little interesting points. But no, I thought the same thing, to be honest. I remember... My nephew loves these games. He actually bought your PlayStation 3 off you because when he got into it, yep. he really wanted to play it. And I don't think I really asked him about it too much, but that's the impression I got, that it was just a, a prototype. But yeah. playing it on the PlayStation 5 with those graphic, you know, the graphical improvements, I do think there's some performance, you know, like I think it plays maybe less sluggishly, like it plays more like Dark Souls 3 rather than maybe how Demon Souls originally played. I don't know if that's factual but i feel like it is um no it felt great it just felt different different enough to be interesting but you know more than familiar basically cool uh a couple more things online you touched upon that did you dabble in it much and what can you do what you can't you do um can you just get invaded randomly and wiped out yeah so this was the funny well most fun that i had i guess because 
I played Bloodborne way after the fact. Yeah. I played Dark Souls 1 on my Switch on my commute, so no online functionality. No. And I played, well, I played uh, Dark Souls 3 with my uh, nephew, but just basically co op the whole game. So yeah. I've never really had the co op. I've never summoned before, never been summoned or anything like that. So I actually spent like quite a, like a significant amount of time like learning this and getting involved in it. Oh. So you've got all the normal things, you know, like the blood stains on the floor that show you how people have died. Yeah. You've got the messages. You can be invaded if you're in again if you're in full like human mode. You can actually one of the downsides is you can be invaded and killed and lose all your souls. Jesus. But then you can leave like a a lamp basically to go and invade other people's worlds. You can help people. You can call for help at bosses and things. Um, and also kind of fun. One of the bosses you fight is unless you go in offline mode, he's always controlled by an NPC. Cool. So you've always got the chance oh, of becoming by human, him. sorry. Yeah, yeah, by human, sorry. Yeah, so you've always got the chance of becoming him, which I did a bunch of times, or when you fight him yourself, you're fighting someone else playing. Mate, you must have been a walkover if you ended up being him, invading. I bet people are like, cool, that's the easiest boss I've ever faced. I did fuck it a few times, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> did you... <laughs> that sounds like it could be a, bit, a real annoyance if you're trying to get through that boss and you keep just getting these people that are just ridiculously good at it. I assume exactly. you eventually get someone who's beatable and you can get past yeah. them. And if you, if you look online, most people like just tell you to uh, turn that off and just play to fight the computer. Like, oh, okay. Because you'll get, you will get a lot of people, which I got with like, they're really over leveled, like, but it still lets them in there. It should be kind of like matching you to a point. Yeah. And they, they like, you know, especially like, it feels like the magic is a little bit broken in this game. You know, it's a bit overpowered. Right. And a, I was getting blitzed, mate. Like, literally, I'd walk in the room, get, like, one hit, and I was like, well, that's annoying. Now I've got to go all the way back there again and walk into that again. But it's a cool, you know, concept, but I can kind of see why maybe that didn't carry over to the other games. Nice. Well, one of the things that the Souls games and the Bloodborne games and Sekiro are famous for, anything from software has done since Demon Souls, are the bosses. How do the bosses stack up to your Dark Souls games and and the Bloodborne ones that you've encountered? Are they are they up to snuff? Are they a bit? Are they better? Worse? Any any highlights that you want to Mate, share that doesn't completely yeah. blow it away for someone who hasn't played it? No, I, I would just say you're in for a treat. Basically, this you know, three or four of them are right up there. You know, like graphically and like you know, art design wise and mm. difficulty wise as well. Um, yeah, you got some really, really nice. I was re- again really surprised. Really nice, um, and you know, a lot of them. Then they are like the blueprints. Like they've been copied, but they're probably the ones they've copied a lot. Probably, I would say they're better in this. But that might be the PS5's power really sort of bringing them to life to that next level. Perhaps yeah. so I don't know. It probably, but, probably yeah, helps. Really impressed. Interesting. Um, okay, so we've got you've played a bit. Of, you've played Dark Souls. You've played Demon Souls and Bloodborne. So they're sort of the three main ones. We'll get on to Sekiro just in a moment. But out of those three, now I know Bloodborne was one of your one of your favourite games of the of the last generation. Does Demon Souls do enough to kind of get him? I'm sure it's not going to be above Bloodborne, but getting above maybe Dark Souls, or is it full just short in that sort of little leaderboard and just coming third? It's tough. I'd, I'd probably peg it level with Dark Souls. Like it's essentially the same. It's just mm. it's hard to call, isn't it? Because I don't really know what I prefer. I reckon the interconnected world does make more sense. It's better, but storytelling and like it is an upgrade. But other than that, I mean, there's not, literally nothing in it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm surprised now. I mean, I don't know how well this reviewed originally. But, you know, it felt like Dark Souls was a, you know, came across to me as a big upgrade. Like, you know, it's all come to home now, a bit of a Assassin's Creed 2 deal. But yeah. it doesn't feel like that at all. This is, you know, a fully fledged, amazing game. So, yeah, I'd put it in, you know, I'd happily put it in second, basically. But that might be me just because that's the one I've played most recent. So I might be giving it a bit more credit than it deserves. But nice. no, I was thoroughly impressed. Excellent. Just for reference, it got on 89 back in 2009 on, on Metacritic. We don't have Open Critic from back then. And uh, the Open Critic score it, for, for the remake is 92. So it's in the same ballpark. Hasn't gained a few points probably for the graphical upgrades. Um, but yeah, it was reviewed pretty well back in the day. 
Fair enough. That leaves you with a bit of a a, a couple of couple of holes, one bigger than the other, in this little from software license of yours. I mean, Dark Souls Two, that's you know sandwiched between one and three. Mizugaki wasn't doing it. So some people say it ain't a real Dark Souls game and people seem to have problems with that. Is there any chance that you will dabble back to that Dark Souls 2 and go through it just to, to get through it? So then you've done the trilogy of Dark Souls and, and add it to your list and add it to your accolades. If they give me a remaster, I'll be all over it, but I ain't going back. <laughs> Fair enough. And then what about Sekiro? Because that's a that's a another bit of a departure you've had the, the, the biff and your evil brother adkins the tom a brothers um both getting through sekiro and adkins enjoying it more than biff but they've got through it and that's you know a, a, that's the most recent from software game yeah i'm a bit scared of that one mate i, I don't feel like there's any way to cheat here you can't just go and grind and upgrade you actually have to get good and <laughs> And actually do it didn't you it's all like timing and stuff i ain't the most i haven't got a lot of rhythm so i think i might struggle with that but yeah that's that one i should play really so yeah i can see myself you know if i see that cheap somewhere and i've got a bit of a hole in my calendar then mate it'll be on game pass one day it. and then your excuse is gone yeah i think with these games though it's like you need a you need a long like palette cleanse like i won't be going near anything for a year so we'll see yeah. I mean, it should run on PS5 or Series X at 60 FPS now. I think I saw the uh, the backwards compatibility sort of upgrades. So that'll run nice and smooth. It was, again, a bit of a pig um, on, on those consoles. So maybe we'll check back with you in 12 months to see if Sekiro's been... Well, the trouble is by then Elden Ring will be announced and out. And then it's like, cool, what do we do about that? Ah, uh, mate, got no way. He's back. He's just never getting that done, is he? That's on the back burner as well. Oh, Martin, and he goes, uh, put it on the back. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've got it on the list. I keep ringing him. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll get to that, definitely. It's, it's on the list, trust me. Give me a little while. Um, Demon Souls, then. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. How many thumbs are you giving it and where are you putting them? Both the thumbs up, mate. No cool. doubt about it. Some people say it's one of the best launch games ever. I wouldn't argue with it. I think people have been crying out for a remake for ages. Mm. I think a lot of people missed it because, you know, it's a bit obscure in its day and stuff and then became, you know, hard to get hold of and play and whatnot. And, yeah, to wait for, like, PS5. You know, these boys at Bluepoint are spot on with their uh, work. And, yeah, I mean, I can't think of a better one in recent times anyway. Wow. There you go. Demon Souls two thumbs up playstation 5 only at the moment i have a feeling it's going to come to pc just because when they first revealed it that it said on the trailer coming to pc as well later on and that can't just be a made-up mistake no i that agree it feels who, like it will do yeah and then and master race can have a, have a go at it but for now it's uh it's only on sony's platform strange how even with demon souls and now the remake and bloodborne that they sort of get like a couple of exclusives from From Software. Um, and then yeah. you have like Dark Souls and Sekiro that are multi plats. Yeah, it's true, actually. Yeah, God knows. Who knows? Right. I've been chatting about the PS, what a game on the PS5 in, in Demon's Souls. Uh, you have a PlayStation 5, but you also have an Xbox Series S. 250 UK pans. Um,. I doubt you've played it to its full potential because the PS5 has been sitting there. But what are your high-level thoughts of this this Series S, given that it's a much cheaper iteration of a next-gen console, but it does come with some compromises? High-level, physically. It's yep. a beautiful-looking little machine compared Tiny, to the it? big old... Yeah, yeah. It's like the much better look. It's like the Tom Cruise to sort of the PlayStation 5's Andre the Giant. Like That's the sort of physical attractiveness differences. It looks nice. It's fucking cheap. Mm. But from what I've played of it now, I really couldn't tell you. It's like playing my Xbox One. Right. It's exactly the same. It's got Game Pass. It's got a load of good games on there. Most of them I've either played before or dabbled in before and there's nothing to play that's new unfortunately mm. no disc drive either so that's because one of the compromises you can't even double it up as a blu-ray player downstairs uh, eventually 
No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique... I, I can't see... I got it because it was cheap and I enjoyed Game Pass and I figured yeah. I just want that to continue. I like having that for, you know, what, 12 quid a month or whatever to have that chance to pick up. Like, I'm playing Control on it. I finished Demon yeah. Souls, went to Game Pass, saw Control, thought, do you know what? I fancy that. Never played it. And there it is then for free, essentially. So I'm like, perfect. Um, that's why the reason I got it. And then I've got my PS5 for my bread and butter. Um, I don't know. I guess if you're like, if you're just legit, like, haven't got a lot of money and you just want to play next gen games, mm. maybe. But surely, what's the what's the big boy cost? Another hundred and fifty quid. Uh, so it's four fifty for the big boy. All right. Um, but what I would say is the alternative is if because obviously if you're thinking of getting the Series S, one of the compromises is that you're getting no no Blu-ray player. So you have to, you, you've already accepted that as a compromise. For an extra hundred and ten, you can get a full blown PS5 for that with a digital console. And yes, that's like yeah, full powered. You're right. That's that's very true. I, get, I mean, the only gamble, and it is such a gamble this stage, is because no one knows what's coming out. All these studios that Xbox have bought, yeah, like what three years down the line, like if they start producing the games that they're like capable of, but no one's got a clue what that is. So it does make it a difficult choice, basically. Yeah. It's an interesting ploy, isn't it? To say here's, here's, here's two next gen options where one's one is compromised and what, what the games won't run as well, or look as well. And you've just compared it to kind of your old Xbox one. Um, do you think it's a work to getting more people transferred over into the Xbox Series S ecosystem, or do you think most people, especially at this early stage where it's, it should be mostly enthusiasts that are buying it, are just going to say it's all, it's either full fat or nothing? Oh, yeah, it's, I don't know, mate. I mean, I bought one and I looked the other day and they're sold out and they're going for like way more than they retail at. I mean, mm. not PS5 levels, but they retail 250 they're going for like 360 yeah so people clearly do want them like god knows there's literally nothing to play on it at the moment so why you'd want it because at least the playstation 5 you know when i unbox that you got the remote you've got astro bot you've yeah. got demon souls you've got and you know a couple of other things on there that are next gen it feels next gen whereas yeah. i mean admittedly i don't know what your big boy was like in the xbox but right. yeah this really doesn't feel like that way if no. i'm honest one of my criticisms of the Series X was that it just felt the same, and some people yeah. might see that as a positive. They'd be like, "Oh, great! It doesn't it doesn't matter if I don't upgrade for one thing. But if I do, I'm going to be familiar with everything. The controller's not had any upgrades, but it's a very safe yeah. sort of deployment from Xbox on both sides. They've not tried anything new, which they, to be honest, after the Xbox One. And considering the amount of shit that got for all the Connect stuff, they were like, look, mm-hmm. cutting edge, snap, fucking watch your telly jobby whilst you're playing Dark Souls 1 to through 3. And it's like, people didn't want that. So fingers did get burnt with the Xbox One. So I, can, I, I think they maybe just needed a bit of a safe deployment on this one. Not to, you don't want to make any mistakes. Like, no, it's very true. And it, and it weren't, you know, they got themselves into a position in that generation late on, to be fair, with Game Pass and yeah. everything else. And, and you know, to step back from all those things they said early on that upset people yeah. where it, it's not the worst um, like um, idea, but yeah, like this is such an exciting time like to be a gamer. I mean, you get your new generation. Mm. It was, you know, I mean, like, I, I knew it was for me because obviously I wasn't even getting a full fat boy, yeah. but it was very anticlimactic. It was a bit like, right. That's that. I, I think one of the first games I ended up playing was Celeste again. I was like, "What?" I was playing this on Switch. Just, <laughs> what am I doing? But I was like, "What do I do?" And then you know, I was downloading Gears Five to see it in, uh, I think, 120 frames or whatever. Like my nephew had his monitor around, and yeah. he was like spinning around in circles, showing me that. And I was like, "I don't care." To be honest, <laughs> like, come on. Fair enough. So I am excited. Like I am excited because I want to know what those studios get, and you know, and just being able to play. Um, you know, keep you know the modern games on Xbox. It gives me a choice, mm. but I don't really know to be honest. Like it's it's a tough one. It'd be interesting to see whether your perspective changes in in the fact that once, say, let's just use an example, the new Elder Scrolls game comes out from Bethesda, they churn that out eventually, yeah, say, yeah. and they say, "Oh, well, here we go, me. big big." It's on Game Pass for free. 
have it, have it, have at it. But on the Series S, it kind of it doesn't suffer, but it doesn't look as good as the Series X, and it it looks awesome in all the trailers, like all the, the Series X footage. You're like, cool, oh, that looks fucking gorgeous. But Fez have really knocked it out of the park, and then you look at your Series S and go. Hmm, I'm going to be playing that compromised at a lower level. Will it just fuel a bit of fire it's to really, an upgrade to a full fat boy? That's going to really annoy me, isn't it? <laughs> I, was just saying. I guess in my head I'm relying on them not, I don't know, those games not ever coming out, which I'm <laughs> they sure won't be they for a will. Few years, so you're safe for a couple no, of years, yeah. you think. I, I think because mine, like, I, I basically got my 1S in a really good deal like over Black Friday, yeah. only about, I think it was literally a year ago. So I managed to, I actually sold it for more than I paid for it. And then I paid like, I think like 90 pounds to upgrade to the Series S. It just seemed yeah. like a no brainer at the time. But now I have to admit, I am thinking like, mm, for the sake of an extra 200, like four games I could have had, especially when then I could have bought them and sold them again, like which I'm planning to do on the PlayStation. Yeah. I might have shot myself in the foot long term, but see how that pans out. Check in with me. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely check. I think it, in the early stages, it's quite it's always difficult to justify having both the consoles. Um, but that's which, I, which is what I'm finding at the moment. It's like I probably didn't need both. In fact, I know I didn't need both. Um, if either at all, maybe like I could have potentially stuck with it and got something for the new year. Um, but let's quickly move on to PS5. There's rumours and and all sorts of conjecture about you potentially selling up the PS5. So is this a is this just a sour breakup with Sony? Is it all over? Has as, as Jim Ryan done something to to piss in your cornflakes? And you're like, right, I want a shot of this, or are you purely just looking for some sort of opportunity to increase your financial capital by cashing yeah. in on a, a hot ticket item that's going to be difficult to get probably until the spring? Yeah, I've looked at next gen, sort of played one game, I'm pissing all over. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> Checking out. See you later. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's B, mate. Um, like, I mean, I'm not definitely doing it. I, but I've just seen those prices that are going on place on eBay and whatnot. Mm. And I'm like, that's mental. Yeah. And then I look at the, the release schedule and I'm like, I don't really know what I'm waiting for now. I hear that Resi might be coming out in like Q1. Yeah. But I mean, I, that, that's amazing. Cause that'd be two of the games. I was probably, you know, of all the ones I know are definitely coming. That's two of them out within the first quarter essentially which is great for me yeah but I, I imagine by the time that releases i'll be able to pick the console up again i'm pretty certain cool that'll be the case so i'm like if somebody wants to pay me an extra you know 400 pounds on top of what i paid for it then yeah potentially i think what i might do is i was like i think i said to you off yeah the console's now with my nephew who loves these games. He's play, he's actually just beat it. 26 hours to my like 53, which sort of annoyed me. Is that a lot? Yeah, 53 yeah. hours for Demon Souls? Mm. Yeah, 53. But Frick. yeah, he has played it before, to be fair. And yeah. he's a lot better than me. So that's fine. So he's blasted through it. So I'll pick it up again this weekend. I might whack it on for sale, like locally on, you know, Gumtree and stuff. Like put it out for top whack and see what happens. I'm, I'm not fussed either way. There's always like tech that i shouldn't buy that i want to buy that i could put the extra money towards and then like i said just keep the money aside and you know have a look i wouldn't worry about it until new year jan feb march whatever um but yeah I, I, it really doesn't bother me either way mate if i don't sell it or they won't pay what i want for it then there's no bother i mean to be honest i might be too lazy even to put it up for sale i've put a well, box up in the loft so you've got that, you've got that telly of mine to sell well that ain't going nowhere mate i've got two more statues to get rid of a hot ticket pop funko box to get rid of this time and if you want to sell it uh, a little entertainment center if not that's just going to be given away so that's potentially five other things that you've got to be getting on and selling so it's not you oh. like fucking george rr R. martin going yeah i'll get to it i'll sell it It'll, i'll, I'll Mate, put it on the list for you it's free if i'm not allowed out the house it's true that's true uh, it has stifled all financial sales right nice quick one we've done our games of the generation podcast go back and listen to that if you want to find out what our our collaborative overall top six games were and then eventual winner um, but we're going to spend just a few moments here with Mr Edcock going through his top five personal picks uh, nothing too in depth just to try and do this with people that 
I manage to snarl up on within the next sort of few weeks or so if they've not already sort of done their personal picks. So do you want to uh, take away what's on the list and perhaps give us a brief, brief little sort of positive spin on, on why it's there? Yeah, do you want, well, you want to just game and then why, game then why. Game then why, games. game then why. Yeah. At the end, we'll circle back round and go, right, what's the winner? Let's make the odds. Oh, I didn't want that. That's annoying. Right, okay, so game one is actually Bloodborne. Yep. I'm a big fan of this series, as we've just... Um, spoke about for the last half hour and probably my favorite first one i played probably my favorite i mean i would say it's the biggest departure like in terms mm. of setting but Sekiro probably takes that crown now yeah. but i love this kind of lovecraftian world they've set it in um bosses are amazing everything about this game's good really although i looked at it the other day and it does look it's starting to look a bit creaky now well it looks good I was going to ask if they do like a, a new patch of it and it goes up to 60 they sort of maybe touch it up slightly would you be tempted to go back into it or is it just one of those things you want it as the the memory that it was in 20 whatever you played it in probably 17 or 18 by the time you got to it and you don't want to go back and live through that sort of those hellish parts yeah. of the game again exactly i don't think i'd go back i love it but it's, it's there as memory give me a number two and okay. i'm all over it I'll, I'll watch all the clips on youtube i mean it only takes five minutes with how they do story but yeah um it's, it's my favorite of the uh from software games still and yes. that's high testament because I love this series. Excellent. Uh, next one is Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Cool, a Nintendo fanboy. Here we go. Getting that bump. <laughs> Give me the trailer for that new one. Where? What's, what's going on with that? Here we could well, be getting one soon. Could be yeah. today even. Could we? be. It's yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we, it could already have been aired by the time this ends up getting to people with the the uh, the schedule we're on. But you've you've enjoyed the original. Kind of a Switch launch game, although it's technically a Wii U port. It did launch the system of the Switch, so we were talking about Demon Souls being a great launch game. Breath of the Wild might probably trumps that, to be quite honest. Yeah, but it was available on the Wii U, wasn't it? It's yeah. not the same. Okay, so fine. Getting, getting them in that. Exclusive. Yeah. I would say ultimately it is flawed. And you played it on Wii U? I did play it on the Wii U, yeah, before I got my Switch, okay. yeah. Yeah. The tech it was designed for, some say. Better well, performance. I remember me and Mike like showing that little gamepad, going, "Look, you can look at the map on this, and it's all going to be built into it." And then, <sighs> like, yeah, definitely Wii U only. It's built for that technology. Like, then radio silence for two years. It's like launching with the Switch <laughs> and Wii. <Yeah. laughs> it's like we need to get start shifting that Switch and abandon the Wii. <laughs> Walk away from it. Yeah, I think. I, 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 I'm not as hot on this as everyone, but I think one, you know, Nintendo are in their own little world and Mm. I hate making allowances for them, but I, along with everyone else, does. And (laughs) it was really nice to see them go open world for the first time and do it in a way that I don't think anyone else has done, like open world to this level. The fact that you can literally go and tackle that boss within the first, like, two hours as soon as you get off that plateau. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I... do love almost everything about this game i'm really excited for the new one because i'm hoping they might they probably won't because it's probably going to be you know I would, they always do different things with zelda so yeah. i'll keep my fingers crossed but i hope they kind of make the dungeons a bit more traditional is yes. what i'd like in the open world setting yeah and then you've got me uh you know a bona fide number one game mm. of the generation i'd say but ultimately i had a brilliant time playing this i must have put in 60 or 70 hours total enjoyed yeah. them all yeah, and there's still probably another 60 hours to go back to if you ever wanted to of stuff that you haven't done. Oh, yeah. mate, yeah, I didn't touch the uh, expansions or anything, no, so... No, and It's interesting, This the, the, when it's all said and done, Breath of the Wild might be the best game on Wii U and the best game on Switch, sort of covers two, two yeah. Nintendo console runs. Um, I hope they can top it, because that means more great games for us. Okay, what's number three? On this Three is of... also one of my favourite series, really. Uh, it's the Resident Evil, and it's yes. the number two, the remake. Yes, yes. Very good. I mean, I spoke to you about this in depth, I think, a couple of times. Um, arguably the... Well, no, arguably my favourite remake of all time. Like, you know, built from the ground up. Um, yes. Essentially the same... Ga- well, no, is it the same... Well, well, you got you've definitely got that Mr. X lurking about. He's yeah, not in same beats, I would say, but a true remake to bring it into modern gaming and like structure. Um, because 
all the controls were changed. The, obviously, the graphics were changed, but they they did make some artistic choices and, and creative changes from the original. Like, it's not a lot of choice. It's very there's a there's a canon story to this one, but inspired obviously heavily by the original. But is a true what was it 2019 or 2020? It come out 2019, like a yeah, true early, wasn't a it? true yeah. game of the eighth generation, not held back by. It trying to do old stuff that had come before it. it kind of said look this is like what we think and to be honest for me i've sort of hijacked it now but no no go it um what's going to go anyway it sets the template for like a mod how a modern third person survival horror can work like we've had yeah hints of it with the evil within which came with its own problems like performance wise and just wasn't didn't always click whereas resident evil 2 was just like to me like the the ace of of like the modern survival horror game and uh i would agree with that pick being on there for sure yeah i'm not going to add to that because i echo those thoughts excellent number four yep would be the last of us two there we go there we go nice to always get a game that comes out in the year or the last year of the console so you know that things have peaked you know, yeah, we're getting towards that like, stage. I try and avoid the hype train, but obviously, yeah. along with everyone else, I was super hyped for this game by the time it came out. Yeah. And overall, I don't think it disappointed. I mean, Which it's insane because the hype was insane. Yeah, and exactly. there was like a cloud of like negativity over it as well. From yeah, from fans. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, story wise, for me, it's hard. I think you guys said it actually. I feel like the first one is a perfect film. This yeah. is like a great TV show, and yeah. I, that's. That is the right way, but maybe I'm more of a film guy because I probably the first one's story sat with me longer afterwards. Cool. But I think mechanically this is better than the first one in every mm-hmm. single way. Yeah. And they definitely didn't do the Xbox thing and take an easy choice. They like they no. took massive risks with the story and how it plays through. And I, I mean, whatever you do and don't like, and certain things didn't didn't work, but they should be applauded for that. Naughty Dog, they. They really knocked it out of the park with this, and I guess I am looking forward to hopefully they go back to this world one more time, or yeah, who knows? Yeah, it would be good to see what they do with it. Okay, fifth and final one, what we got? It's a, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at my list. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I'm, I've put it down, so I'm sticking with it. Bit of a, an oddball, but I'm going to go with the little Astro Bot VR. Nice. Yeah. Rescue mission. Rescue mission VR. VR. Correct. I love my little VR set. I've kept it, even though I sold my PlayStation 4. It's going to annoy me because they're bound to bring out like a pro version, but <laughs> yeah. I've gambled. I've kept it. And he's he's back on that as well. That's a good little game. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love this. Is I like the VR probably more than most, and this is my favourite game in VR, like hands down. It's It looks great. It, it's the one that really plays well and really leans into everything that's great about the VR kit. He's a cool little character. Yeah. I want to see more. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, there's your top five. Pick us one, and then we'll let you off. I'm going to go Rizzy 2. Oh. Yeah. I'm just away from the old born. I'm assuming you thought Bloodborne. Yeah, I did. I thought that was Yeah, no, Rizzy, I love that series, and I love the fact that they've now gone like two avenues. I love that you've got the, the first-person modern ones. It needed yep. a change. I love them, and I love that they're kind of remaking the sort of – the best of, if you will, like yeah. with no, just being typically weird and Japanese. Start at number two, go yeah. at number three. God knows what they're doing next, but <laughs> I, I'm on board for it. Yeah, I mean, as we said, it's it is there, but also it, it, it's so graphically and mechanically, and even story differently. It's it's might as well be a different game, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And considering where we left, sort of with six, they got seven, got two remake, and. It's back on track in both timelines or whatever, whatever you want to look at it. So there you go. Sweet. Right, well, I'll let you off. We'll pull this particular episode to a close. Thanks for joining us. And obviously everyone at home, if you've stumbled across this, you can subscribe to the feed on any good podcast app. If you've found it on YouTube, then the channel's there, Idle Game Chat. Just search for it and you'll be able to sub there as well. But nothing more for us to say apart from thanks for your time and ta-da.
This was a Dimp Digital production.